It is 1976. I'm 12 years old. And today is my first day at my new school. I'm nervous. My heart's racing. Will people like me? Above me is a statue of Queen Elizabeth. She's been there for 400 years. And around me are my classmates. But they're smiling even less than she is. Well, it doesn't take them long to realize that I'm here on a scholarship. I'm the youngest kid in the school, and I'm getting be better grades than they are. They call me the runt, El Enano, because I'm so small. And boys with money pay other boys to take my homework and to take my clothes and to scatter them around the school. And in the time between classes, there's a group of boys that grab me, and they punch me so hard in the belly, oh, I can't breathe. But the most painful part is not the physical. The most painful part is going through four years of school with no friends, no one to talk to, never a friendly hand on my shoulder. It's painful, I tell you. Every night I have nightmares. Every day I have headaches. And there comes a point when I can't hold it in any longer, and I tell my parents. They tell the teacher, and the teacher summons the bullies and threatens to punish the hell out of them. And I guess you know what happens next. The bullying gets 10 times worse. Then finally, one day, it's over, and I'm off to college. Thank goodness. And somehow, I managed to survive those four brutal years of loneliness by remembering that humanity is so much greater than this. And it's that realization that leads me to fight for human rights and to found the bullying organization that I've started. I've learned so much on the way. It's been quite a journey. I've learned some shock, too, because I realized early on that it's us, the adults, who are creating the bullying in the world in three main ways. Here's the first way that we do it. We deny that bullying is a problem. I don't know how many of you have seen the documentary Bully that came out in 2011. Some of you, yeah? It begins with a 14-year-old boy called Alex who's emotionally disabled and really has a hard time connecting with the other kids in his school. The filmmakers show us Alex on the school bus, and he's been taunted and shoved and kicked. It's a painful journey for him. And then the film shows Alex being led by his parents to meet the assistant principal. Here's what she says. I've ridden that school bus. Those kids are just as good as gold. And then she moves the whole conversation on to showing the family a photograph of her new grandchild. Her denial is breathtaking. And yet the truth is that the denial around bullying is everywhere. I heard a parent of a small girl go to the teacher to tell her that her young daughter was being isolated. No one, none of the other girls were talking to her. And the teacher said, listen, this is just part of growing up. And I heard a principal say to a 14-year-old girl who's been called slut online on all the social media sites. What he said to her was, listen, this is character forming for you. Really? That's character forming? How can it be character forming to leave a kid in that much emotional anguish and despair to the point that often kids wish they weren't alive? That is not character forming. Then in the year 2000, Something incredible happens. The denial starts to crumble. And we begin to hear stories in the news and on the internet of the reality of student bullying in our schools, often sadly triggered by horrendous student suicides. In the year 1999, here in Spain, El Defensor del Pueblo and UNICEF together put a report out on bullying in Spain. And then, just a few months ago, UNICEF publishes this global bullying map of the world. And what you see there is the number of adolescents between the ages of 13 and 15 who are being bullied on a regular basis. 
if you look at the light yellow countries, such as the United States and China, the number of kids being bullied on a regular basis is between 20 and 30 percent. If you move on to the dark yellow countries, such as Canada and Russia, the number of kids being bullied on a regular basis is between 30 and 40 percent. Moving on to the countries that you see here in red, the number of kids being bullied on a regular basis is 50 percent or higher. We really do have a global epidemic of bullying. And if bullying were a disease, parents would be battering down the doors of the World Health Organization, demanding that they take action. And frankly, I wish they would. Here's the second way that we, make the adults, make bullying worse. We don't talk about why kids are being bullied. So when I was at school, I was too focused with getting through the school day to really reflect on why they were picking on me. But it was clear if I listened to their words. They called me the runt, el enano, because I was small. And they put down my family as poor because we didn't have a car. And mainly, they singled me out as a sensitive kid because back then, it wasn't that hard if you pushed me hard enough to bring me to the edge of tears. Bullying is mostly about differences, and that means that when I go to teachers, I'll often ask them, tell me, who are the kids in your school that are mainly, mainly being left out and bullied? And three groups show up over and over in our conversations. One group is the, gr is the immigrant kids and the kids of minority families. Those showed up as the biggest group being bullied here in Spain in that Del Fenso de Pueblo report that I just showed you. And then there are the kids with mental and physical disabilities. And then there are the kids who are gay or lesbian or who don't follow conventional gender stereotypes for how they dress or behave. It's a difficult conversation to have because I'm asking teachers in public in a group like this to come face to face with their own blind spots and their own prejudices. But unless we address the prejudice and intolerance that drives so much of bullying, we're never going to change it. Here's the third way that we're making bullying worse. We try to use punishment to stop it. Ever since school started, and I'm visualizing here a group of kids in the Rift Valley of Africa, and they're sitting under a baobab tree somewhere, I bet there was a teacher somewhere skulking out there that was saying, I'm going to punish those kids if they don't behave. Bullying's been there since the beginning of the punishment like that's been there since the beginning of time. There's tons of re research out there showing that punishment doesn't turn around kids' behavior. In fact, all it seems to do is to alienate them further from school. But it's a hard habit for us to kick. As you know, I when I told my parents that I was being bullied and they told the teacher and the teacher used punishment, it got way worse for yours truly. Here's why punishment doesn't work. You can't use bullying and exclusion, leaving a kid out of school, to combat bullying and exclusion. Or as Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. So, enough of the darkness. Let's move into the light. I'm going to tell you a story. This is an old Cherokee story. There's a grandfather, and he's talking to his grandson. And the grandfather says to his grandson, listen, there are two wolves always fighting inside of us. One is the wolf of wounded pride and aggression. The other is the wolf of kindness and compassion. Little boy says to grandfather, grandfather, which wolf wins? Grandfather turns to the little boy and says, oh, it's the wolf that we feed. I love that story. It's such a refreshing look at human nature. 
grandfather's reminding us that there's a wolf of kindness and compassion inside each one of us. We just have to feed it. So my organization decided to put grandfather's words into action. There's a high school in California where a young man called Alvaro, 16 years old, beautiful young man, was being relentlessly taunted for being gay. So we decided to bring together a solution team of kids to end the situation. Here's how solution team works. We brought together the bully and, and the bully followers, three or four kids, together with three or four kids that the other students looked up to, the respected kids in that particular class. We told them, folks, you're not in trouble. You're here as a solution team to help us with a problem. And then we walked them into Alvaro's shoes so they could have the experience of empathy. Listen, we said, you all know Alvaro. He's suffering. Every day he comes to school, he hears words like, that's so gay. And why do you move or dress like a girl? No one ever talks to Alvaro like a human being. And it's got to the point now that Alvaro doesn't come to school because he doesn't want to live. And then we ask them the action question. What can you do or what can you stop doing to end the situation? This was a tough school. Several of those students started to cry. We never realized how bad it was for him, they said. We were just kidding. Those students committed not only to ending the gay calling of Alvaro, but they started a campaign to end gay calling across that whole school. Alvaro's story is not unique. There are thousands of solution teams that have been run across the whole world now, and teachers are able to solve over 90% of cases of bullying. Why? Why do solution teams work? Because grandfather, the old Cherokee, had it right. We are wired for empathy from our earliest years. And translated to school world, what that means is that if you draw out the wolf of kindness and compassion in your kids, you can end the vast majority of bullying at your school. So, there is much that we can do to make sure that the kids now don't suffer what so many of us endured when we were at school. Starting with you, start with feeding your wolf of kindness and compassion. Think about a time when you were in a conflict with someone else, and maybe you didn't handle it that skillfully. Maybe you hurt them. Be kind to yourself. We've all done this. And then do the turnaround. Put yourself in their shoes. See things through their eyes. And use that insight as the focus of your, of your next conversation with that person. And then feed the wolf of kindness and compassion in the kids that you work with. Maybe it's beaten down and hidden from years of us adults lecturing them and punishing them. But it's there in pretty much every kid that you will ever meet. And that wolf is our best ally in ending bullying and violence, not only in our schools, but also in our communities, and finally, in the world. Thank you. <laughs>